There's a plethora of reasons, and the primary is that uh, the weather in South America, obviously, but the situation in the Ukraine uh, is a major for all for all grains because you disrupt one, as uh, you're going to raise all uh, rising tide lifts all boats, but also the the strength in the energy markets is uh, quite prolific. So you kind of have a number of things that are all working in, in sync with each other. And uh, the weather may be temporary, but it, I think it's already taken a portion of their crop out, so that, that's permanent. The tops in the weather markets come with a lot of volatility. So when you start to see major moves in both directions stacked up, then the market's having trouble uh, coming to a, to a conclusion, and that's dangerous. The wheat market kind of went off before the rest of the markets, but it remains at extremely high prices. Um, you know, in the Ukraine and uh, the, the Black Sea area in general, I mean, it could be the entire area uh, could, could – because uh, Russia could decide, uh, if you're going to halt our exports, we're not going to allow other exports to go. So they may – they would maybe do things that would be negative to the world just to get uh, what they're negotiating for. So. It's not just one side about it not being able to get out of Russia. It could be blocked from coming out of other uh, Black Sea countries. Well, I've traveled a lot to the area. And uh, you have the Russian and the Ukrainians, which are very proud, uh, stubborn, and really have no fear especially in Ukraine, where their conditions are you – know, the economic conditions are not the greatest. And uh, they, they view their independence as a, as a reason why they put up with those conditions. So if something does happen, it's going to be a real – that's why the CIA and, and the military are out saying it could be really bad if they invade, uh, because it would be a lot of deaths. But anyway, what happens, though, you've got to look full forward into the corn market. Because you can destroy portions of uh, – with, with these bombs and all the chemicals that they have in them, you can destroy the crops for next year. And Ukraine's at any given year the third or fourth largest corn exporter. So they don't produce a lot of corn, but they export a lot of corn. So with that corn's missing, you know, if the Russians come in – last year we had problems because the Ukraine people, even though they only came – the Russians came in a small portion, the economy went dead and the farmers didn't have any way to get credit or any cash to even plant the crops. So we're really looking at the next crop cycle. So what it does is it, it, it extends the uncertainty and the volatility in the bull market maybe in the grain markets just because of Russia. Absolutely, uh, but it's also you get to the end of their export season. When you have a 500,000 sale to unknown, it's usually it's China. Um, but you know, you never know that maybe some uh, Brazil, Argentina, they may, they may, uh, who knows that they may buy. They may know how bad the damage is, and maybe they want to buy some uh, physical to meet their customer demands ahead. And again, when you say that you can't see. Uh, imports into the U.S. from South America, well, that, that myth went away 20 years ago. So never say never in the grain markets now. Absolutely, and the job of the Treasury market is to factor in uh, ahead of the Fed. So the Fed can, at, at the end, they just have to react to what the market's already done. So it's really not the Fed that raises rates, the marketplace raises rates. And so we're at that juncture right now to where, uh, you know, this is a multi-year, decade, whatever you want to have. People that are young, you better buy your house now because it's going to get, the interest is going to get higher and values are going to get even higher. Meaning into next year or later this year? No, I think, yeah, I think it's, uh, it, we, not only is it this year, but it's going to have legs and it's going to continue. I mean, we are so abnormal in terms of where we're at in interest rates 
that uh, they could double and they could triple, which is not saying much. Their mandate is to battle inflation. And uh, like I say, and they have so many fires that are completely unrelated. And when you're talking physical commodities, the Fed has, uh, they have monetary tools and the government has fiscal tools, but not, none of them have commodity tools. And so if that's where the inflation's coming from, inflation causes bond yields to go up. Well, in the beginning, like equities, makes it go up. It, it pulls up grain prices. And this is where the irrational pricing can come in. Because you get in a run and the fear in the marketplace by large food companies is, I got to get what I need. We can't shut down the processing facility. We got to get our supply. So they really, they, like, unlike a producer in the field, they, re, they have a, they just have to buy. They don't, they don't care how much. The risk of loss in trading futures and or options is substantial and each investor and or trader must consider whether this is a suitable investment.